and then it left, and I tried to follow it, but it was as though it vanished. There has to be some kind of logical explanation. Must we debate this? I told you from the first to leave that cabin, and you insist on staying. You want to get to the bottom of this, but you'll be more likely at the bottom of the sea before you're through. It's uncanny. Just get another cabin. No, I can't do that. I can't believe in ghosts or anything so ridiculous. There is an explanation here, and I'm going to stay awake tonight, in 105, to see what's behind this, and I would like to have you with me. If there is a natural explanation, we'll go from there. And if there isn't? If it is, in fact, supernatural? Then we'll go from there. First we have to see what's wrong with a portal, and why that constant damp smell might explain some things. Then I suggest that you get the ship's carpet. Search the whole place. We did just that. Everything was checked. The walls, the floor, the berths, the portal. There was no earthly reason for anything. So the doctor and I began our vigil. And you got a small light handy? Oh, my reading lamp. We'll get that out. Okay. Now this door... Yep. Soft, good and tight. Well, um, what about the porthole? I asked the stewardess to seal it up again as well as they could. Good. Now I'll sit up against the door. You take the lower berth. And we wait. There's nothing else we can do. Well, we'll either be in for a real disappointment, or... Or we'll have some good old nightmare fuel. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time it was in March. The passenger who slept here, well, I guess you could say she was a psychotic. She was seen rushing out in the night and just jumped overboard. We tried to find her, but the weather was just getting bad, so there was no hope. And the next one was... What are you looking at? I couldn't answer. My eyes were fixed on the porthole, which the doctor wasn't able to see. And the screws were turning. Um, anyway, the, the next passenger to disappear from 105 was even stranger. No one reported a drowning, but they, they were nowhere on board. The same day a stewardess came in here and found the porthole open, water gushing in as the ship rolled. And no matter how they tried, that awful smell, that... that... I smell it. I, I can smell it now, don't you? My reading lamp that I placed beside me went out. The portal! But how? Look. Look. The upper berth. There's something inside. I jumped up and I reached into the upper berth. I saw it. It was horrible. It was the corpse of a woman long drowned. Its dead white eyes glaring back at me. As I grabbed it, the shiny pale hair flung in my face, and the putrid odor of the sea was enough to make me sick. Its slimy, cold form came at me with such force that it nearly broke both my arms. It used its superhuman strength and threw us both upon the floor, wrapping its icy hands around my neck, strangling my effort to scream. I couldn't hold on to it any longer. And in an instant, it was over. I must have laid there for hours. A sharp pain told me that my right arm was broken. And the thing? Well, it left the only way that it could. Through the portal. The doctor wasn't hurt, but he was badly stunned. After all, the evidence was put before the captain. Over a dozen large screws were put through the door of 105. Believe it or not, the Kamshatka sailed another year after that, before she was decommissioned. 
Had you in that time tried to get a berth in 105, you would have simply been told that it was occupied. Well, it was. By something that's dead. You see, I saw a kind of a ghost. I believe that it was that poor woman who jumped over the first time months ago. And that she remains in a sort of limbo, repeating that one night. It's my guess that she'll keep doing it. Until the very fibers of that ship no longer dwell upon this earth. Service, say. Which one of? Uh,